Hey guys, I'm Eka here. Welcome back to my channel. And in this video, we're going to have a conversation. You see, every day when I turn on the TV, the media keeps telling me how great of an investment buying a home is. That you have to buy your first home. But it turns out millennials aren't biting. In the last study I saw, they said 37% of millennials own homes, which is 8 percentage points lower than other generations. So millennials today are choosing to invest in other things rather than buying a home. Are they right? In this video, I'm going to give you the top reasons why millennials have it right. So guys, before we get into it, just please remember to hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to leave your comments below. I read all of them and I'd love to hear from you guys. Now, buying a home, is it a good investment? I'm not Grant Cardone, the real estate specialist, but I am somebody who has made some really good sound investment decisions and I always come here to YouTube and share it with you guys. This is what I think. Buying a personal home is not a good investment. It's not an investment at all. Here's why. Number one, timing. You saw my last video, I showed you, you can make money in, in index funds, mutual funds, you can make money trading palladium futures, you could make money if you invested in Chipotle uh, last year, you could have made 90% on your money. You could make money if you enter the market at the right time. Timing is everything. But when you're buying a home, the place that you're gonna live, not an investment home, we're talking about where you live, your own home, for you and your family, you don't factor timing into it. You buy a home when you need a home. And you stay in that home until you don't need that home again, until you're moving somewhere else. Because a good investment is all about timing. And buying a home, you don't care about buying it at the time when the price is the best. You buy it at the time when you need it the most. Number two, the carrying costs are too high. What do I mean by this? If you buy stocks, bonds, index funds, mutual funds, whatever. You pay for the asset and then you wait as the price rises. You're done, no carrying cost, right? I buy my stocks, I watch it. I buy my Bitcoin, I watch it, the price rises. But with a house, what do you do? You buy your house, then you pay your mortgage, you pay your taxes, uh, the roof breaks, you fix that too. And then you hope that in five, six years, maybe the house will be worth $100,000. But think about it. If you've been paying a mortgage of $2,000 a month, and it's 12 month, 24,000 times five, five years, you probably spent over 100,000 on a mortgage alone, not to talk about all you spent on repairs. So even if your house rose by $100,000, you've actually lost money because the carrying cost is too high. That's another reason why it's not a good investment. Number three, you can't take profit. This comes back to timing, what we talked about before. What do you do when you sell your stocks? You take all that cash, you use it to buy whatever you want, or you invest it in some more stocks. So all the equity in your house, what do you do? Yeah, let's say your house has gone up by $200,000. What do you do? You sell the house, then what? You still have to live somewhere. So you're still gonna take that money that you've made from selling the house, put it in a down payment towards another house. So you don't take profit. A good investment allows you to be able to take profit. You can't take profit on your own personal home. Number four, your house doesn't generate cash flow. You get a house, you get this high mortgage that you have to keep paying off for 30 years. No cash flow. When you invest in stocks, if it's a dividend paying stock, you get cash flow from that stock. And at the end of uh, when you sell the stock, you get cash flow again that you keep, that you can reinvest somewhere else. Same thing with bonds. If you invest in a business, you will get return from that business you're investing in. But when you invest in a house, all you do is you keep putting money into that house. You invest in the house, you buy a house, you live in the house, you fix the roof, you fix the stairs, you fix the carpet, you fix the walls, you pay the mortgage, you pay the taxes, you pay for the water, you pay for the insurance, you pay for everything. So there's no cash flow coming to you, all you're doing is paying for the house. So that's one of the reasons why I think millennials have it right. What's the point? You're taking on this liability when you could just rent a house that maybe if you had $30,000 to put in a down payment or $20,000 to put as a down payment, you could just rent the house, take your $20,000, put it into stocks, 
see those stocks grow to $40,000 to $50,000. Meanwhile, if something breaks in your house, you call the landlord, hey, it's broken, come fix it. So you're saving money while you're using that savings that you've had and reinvesting it somewhere else. That's why I think millennials have it right. That dream of buying a home with a picket fence, that's a dream of the 70s and 80s, I think. Back then, our parents, people back then, were buying houses for $60,000. They were probably making salaries of $50,000 a year. You know, it was a great investment. Those same homes that were $60,000 a year, some of them are like 500,000. And people are still making $60,000 as salaries. Not a smart investment to spend money on a personal home especially when the market is so high and the market is really high right now. If you're buying multifamily or you're buying investment properties to rent out, that's a whole different story. And I'm not getting into that. I'm just talking about why buying your own personal home is not a great investment. It's not that you shouldn't do it, but don't think about it as a great investment because it's not. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up. See you next time.